Uh, being in New York City back in the, even in the mid 60s, everybody knew that Gary Davis was, was in town and he charged five dollars for a guitar lesson. I forget who it was, gave me a, a Reverend Davis's phone number and I dialed him up. I was living, uh, I had an apartment by then on uh, East 7th Street, I think. And uh, I was going to college uh, at the new school on some kind of experimental program I wangled myself into. And I called up Reverend Davis. I had the phone number for about two weeks. I was shy to call him up. I finally called him up and he said, uh, you know, come on over. So he said, when do you want to come over? So I said, well, maybe a week from Thursday. I was a little nervous about it. And he laughed and said, I better come and get it while it's still there. So I went over there on the subway train and the bus and uh, had a guitar lesson. It was a frightening experience. I really wasn't uh, capable of absorbing all that he had to give. But it was a nice relationship. I enjoyed it. And I went back a few few other times. And then he told me uh, not to come by for two weeks because he was going on tour. Uh, Manny Greenhill, his manager, had set him up a tour. He was going to uh, Chicago to play the uh, Quiet Night in Old Town. And then the uh, in Detroit, he was playing the uh, Chess Mate. And then he was doing a Buffalo Folk Festival and a gig at uh, John Hopkins University in Maryland. So I told him I had $50 saved up, maybe I'd go with him, and he laughed at me and said that uh, $50 wouldn't get me very far. But before the day was over, he said to be there at 6.30 the next morning, and he'd carry me with him. He said, I, I need the time with him. And I, of course I did, and I took the subway home and decided to drop out of school and give up my GI Bill and take a shot never regretting it. Next morning I was at his house banging on the door at 6.30 and Mother Davis, I think we still called her Sister Davis then before she got promoted, and uh, she says, what are you doing here? I said, well, Reverend Davis said to be at 6.30, I'm going on tour. She says, well, the train don't leave till 6.30 tonight. You come on inside, I'll make you some breakfast. I wasn't too crazy about her soul food cooking. I got roped into a few dinners. I was a long-haired vegetarian with a mustache at the time. But I ate some uh, horrendous things, <laughs> and then I had to have the breakfast, and it was really a great experience. Reverend Lawrence came over in the afternoon, and we all held hands and said a prayer, and off we went to the train station. I guess it was Grand Central Station. Got a flat tire on the way yet, even after the prayer. But Reverend Davis and I took the train. It was like 36 hours from New York to Chicago. Reverend Davis kept commenting that, he said, good God to mighty, this train stopped at every pig path on the road. I ain't never going to get there. And I always used to put him in the smoking car. He'd smoke his cigars. And then uh, I'd go sit down in a regular place for a while, and then I'd come and get him, and he could be in heated discussions with uh, old black porters about religion and stuff. It was pretty amazing. Then we got to Chicago, and that was cool. Got picked up by some kid. And Reverend Davis played four nights there. I still have the contract from that gig. Reverend Davis was guaranteed $400 versus 80% uh, of the door for the four days, and uh, the cover charge was $2. He didn't make a lot of money. He used to get paid and put all the money down his long johns. He used to have his long johns tied off with a string. He didn't like to change clothes on the road. But uh, Sister Davis gave me instructions, you know, make sure by Tuesday he puts the brown suit on. I said, Reverend Davis, today's Tuesday. He says, yeah. I said, you better put the brown suit on, Sister Davis said. He says, where's Sister Davis? I said, well, she's home. He said, where are we? I said, uh, we're in Chicago. He says, well, we're on the road. We're on the road. I said, yes, sir, Reverend Davis. that played some blues His fingers picked the guitar They danced up and down the board He passed his days just singing and waiting on the Lord People heard his message They came from miles around His 
pulpit was on the streets up in Harlem, sometimes way downtown. The preacher picked the guitar, his hands made the magic chords, and passed his days just singing, waiting on the Lord. One day the angels heard him sing, thought he should be heard. They opened the ears around the world so he could spread the word. His fingers picked the guitar. They danced up and down the board. He passed his days just singing and waiting on the Lord. Across the ocean of London and to France, thanking Jesus every day for giving him that chance. The preacher picked the guitar, his hands made the magic chords, he passed his days just singing, waiting on the Lord. His voice was quiet, his time had come. He knew where he was going, where he had just come from. His fingers picked the guitar, they danced up and down the board. He passed his days just singing and waiting. Well, I told you a story about a man I once knew. He was a blind street singing preacher that played some blues. Fingers picked the guitar, danced up and down the board, passed his days just singing and waiting on the Lord.